Man, man, man. Good morning, guys. It's Friday. We've made it, y'all. Here we are, the end of the week here at the heart of the Arkansas Delta. Good golly, folks, what's going on? We have pulled it off. The weekend is here. It is approachable. We can just reach out and touch it. It's just that close. What's going on, peeps? How is everybody's Friday this morning? What's going on, folks? How y'all doing? How y'all doing today? Y'all, are y'all perking on the top burner this morning? When you get yourselves in here, come on in and say howdy at me. Let me know who all is here. Let me know who is hanging out with me this morning. And then go ahead and hit that share button. Y'all know the deal. Go ahead and hit the share button and let's get this party started this morning. Boy, I tell you what, it is a pretty day out there right now, but boy, I just looked at the radar right before I clicked the live switch, and there is an ugly mess coming out of northwest Arkansas that if it sweeps our way, we're going to see something later on this afternoon. So we got to get ready for it. I mean, we got to get ready for it. Say howdy when you get in, folks, and please, please, I can't say it enough, please hit the share button, okay? Let's get it out there. Hit the share. We want to go and we want to get on out there into your neck of the woods. We want to invite your friends, your family to come on in here and hang out with us. And that's exactly right now what I am doing, that and sucking down some coffee. Mm -mm -mm. Man, that coffee is just so, so good this morning. Guys, come on in. Where everybody at this morning? What y'all doing this Friday? Hmm? Anybody got plans? Anybody doing something special today? Anybody got plans for the weekend? What are y'all doing? Uh, it looks like we got a rainy weekend. I, uh, the weather forecast says we got like seven darn days of, of straight up rain, and that's just bodacious. I mean, forget that. Guys, come on in. Say hello. I'm going to get there in just a minute, and I'll be visiting. I'm trying to get this thing shared as well. So come on in, say hello. We want you to be a part of our good morning coffee chat. It is time to suck down the coffee. It is time to enjoy what God has given us. And we're going to, going to wrap up chapter three in 2 Samuel this morning. No, can't even type. There we go. There we go. There we go. So what does everybody know good this morning? What I mean, what is, what is the word for the day, y'all? What is the word for the day? That's what I want to know. What is the word for today? I got out yesterday. Uh, shortly after I got off live, I had to do some more things right around here in the office. But uh, I got out and I worked in my yard the, a long, long time yesterday. And I'm going to be real honest with y'all. I, I was real close to overdoing it. I, I mean, I, I just about pushed the envelope yesterday. And so I am feeling the, the repercussions of that this morning. Um, I, I, it, and it wasn't so much it got hot, uh, but I did. Dear God, I got hot. But uh, it's just, uh, just a lot of physical stuff. We got a big yard, a big property here. And uh, man, and I weed eat it, and I used my push mower, and I got my riding mower. So, man, it was just tough. All right, I am over here. Let's see who all we got in the building. Good morning, Brian Ponder. What's up, buddy? What you doing this morning? Hey, there's our friends in Maine. There's Rick and Brandy Billion. Good morning, guys. So glad y'all are with us. Man, they are on East Coast time. It is already 10 o'clock on the East Coast. Thank you guys for coming on in this morning. There's Gina Hatley and Gina's mama. So glad you ladies are with us today. Thank you so much, ladies. Let's see here. There's Miss Sandy. Miss Sandy up on the hill. Good morning. Good morning. Let's see here. Who else we got here? Tommy says, we're out of pocket. We'll catch you later. Hey, I got you, buddy. You guys just be safe with whatever you're doing. All right. And just roll on in. And tweet, tweet. That's right. Hey, guys. And, you know, we talked a little bit about social media yesterday. And uh, I, I, I kind of helped Tommy just a little bit to get uh, get his ducks in a row and, and uh, uh, get him off and going on Twitter. That's kind of fun, too. Tommy, you're doing good. Appreciate that. Let's see here. Who else is going on in here? Man, man, man. You got all kinds of good stuff coming in. Say hello when you get here. Let me know who all is here. Let me know what your Friday looks like. Let me know all of the good stuff that is going on. And like I said, I, man, I mowed my yard yesterday and I am, I mean, I am cruising. I am doing good. I've got the weed eating done. I've got the, the sections I needed push mode. It's done. 
and I am in on my rider and I am just in my own little world. And all of a sudden I felt a few drops of rain. Not kidding. And I thought, okay, that's not bad. And I looked up and sure enough, there was a, you know, a little gray cloud that was kind of making its way to me. And, uh, I, I kept driving just a little bit further and the raindrops got a little harder and, uh, uh, maybe, maybe 30 seconds later, and it was an absolute pour down rain. And I was able to get underneath one of our big trees in our backyard that's got a big canopy over it so that I didn't get completely drowned. And I want you to know it rained so hard I couldn't see the pasture out back. And I was real close to the pasture, by the way, with all the cows and horses. And I couldn't see it. It was raining so hard. And it did that for like 15 minutes. It was just a absolute pop-up downpour. And it was right over our house. I mean, our neighborhood was drenched. It was crazy. And of course, yeah, you guys ever mowed a wet yard? And that just made my yard mowing nasty for the rest of the day. And so I got my, my grass and forced it to lump up. And, and just, yeah, yeah. So Jim wasn't a happy camper with the way his yard turned out. But at least it's mowed, amen? It is mowed. And so I don't have to, have to worry with all that. But sure enough, I mean, I got soaked yesterday morning. Uh, it, yeah, well, it wasn't yesterday morning. It was, it was right after lunch. But man, oh man, it just come a cloud burst. And right after that, the sun popped out. And you could see the sun shining in, in uh, you know, in the distance, but showing up and it got hot, man, all that heat off that water and that humidity, it was just craziness. But that was my day yesterday. We studied last night, but man, oh man, boy, I just about pushed the envelope yesterday. I, like I said, I am feeling the, the uh, repercussions of that today. Hey, I saw something this morning. Where's all my sweet tooth people at? Now we talk a lot about, about sweets and food and stuff like that here. I saw something this morning. And uh, 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 it may have caught my eye. And Nestle's, Nestle's Toll House, you know how they do the, 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 the cookie dough and, and logs and you slice it up and, and you bake them up? Okay, Nestle's Toll House has released a new flavor. And it is cinnamon roll cookies. Y'all. Just y'all. Cinnamon roll cookies. Now, Y'all know my passion for cinnamon rolls, and y'all know I love a good cookie, and I have to watch really what I'm doing with my blood sugar, and so uh, the I, all I could think of, uh, see, Tommy Allen's already gone. He'll catch this later. Can you imagine, y'all just visualize just a moment with me, that if you have got a bowl, and you've got about a half a dozen of them cookies that's just come out of the oven. And they are still warm and they are soft. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And then you get you a good couple of scoops of vanilla. I mean, just plain old vanilla ice cream. And you put that dude in that bowl on top of them warm cookies. Y'all, y'all, I would stick my face so far in that it would not even be funny. Y'all would have to come visit me in the hospital but I would so do that. That even sounded good. So yeah, Nestle's Toll House is releasing a cinnamon roll cookie. Somebody needs to try that and tell your pastor exactly uh, how that thing is. And just make me just lick my lips, okay? So, I mean, somebody needs to do that. Mm. Hey, have any of y'all heard about this flooding that's going on in Europe? Uh, yeah, evidently. Uh, it, it, it's like the clouds have just burst over there. And just, uh, I mean, tons of rain has fell in Europe, Germany, and Belgium, stuff like that, to the point where it is flooding the major cities. There's over 100 people already been killed, and there's over 1,000 people missing. Uh, you know, flash flooding has just hit Europe. Did anybody else see this? Uh, I, I did not see this until late last night, and I was like, guys, you got to be kidding me. So we want to pray for our, our, our folks in Europe because they are struggling. Uh, that is just, that is catastrophic. Uh, I, I just, I can't imagine just in one fell swoop, you know, water is powerful. If you have never been caught in water, let me just assure you, water is powerful. 
and uh, uh, it can sweep you off your feet in a hurry. I, I mean, what is it? A half inch of standing water can float your car. I think that's it. A half inch of water. Uh, I've actually been there, done that. So uh, uh, it, it, it's just crazy. And when the water's moving, I mean, you're just swept away. So yeah, over a hundred folks have lost their lives. Over a thousand are still missing. So please, please, please join me as we pray for the folks in Europe. Also, we want to pray for our Miss Mary. Miss Mary was kept overnight in Little Rock, a hospital. So we are still waiting on answers as to what is going on with that sweet lady. So we are, are just uh, uh, waiting now to hear back from her. She's had a barrage of tests run. So continue to remember Miss Mary. Also, uh, we have had on Facebook, uh, Miss Mary's nephew, Chris Swain, who is one of the pastors on staff at Long Hollow, Baptist Church in Nashville, Tennessee, the very large mega church that's over there. Uh, Chris passed away yesterday. This was Miss Mary's uh, nephew. So please remember the family of Chris Swain uh, there in Nashville and also their church family uh, as they are mourning the law. So Chris was a well-known man, uh, not only in his church, but you know in the whole community and in the Southern Baptist Convention. So please, please, please remember Chris Wayne's family as we continue to to move forward. Guys, anything else going on this, this day that I need to know about that we want to yak about? We'll get into announcements here in just a minute. Good morning, Greg McDougal. Greg, where are you at today? Are you at home or are you traveling? Where is Greg McDougal out on Friday? Instead of where's Waldo, it's where's Greg McDougal? Hmm. Hey, let me read us our Bible verse today. We're going back into Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. Great, great stuff. Greg says he is at home. He is at the house. Isaiah 61, verse 1. Scripture writes this. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Holy smokes, what a great passage of scripture as we kickstart our Friday, as we get ready to move forward. Man, oh man, that is good stuff. You know, guys, we are here. We are already at the middle of July. Y'all y'all do realize that we are beyond the halfway point of the year, and now we're at the halfway point of July. That is just crazy. Greg says, praying for a PM service to be a part of. Amen. Uh, uh, amen. And uh, guys, we're nearing back to school. And so I just want to encourage you that when you do get out and uh, uh, you see school supplies on sale, you got bargains, uh, just to go ahead and pick up a few things and bring them by our uh, school supply table that we are gathering at Ridgewood. We've got the list that are ready. They are there, and uh, we would just love for you to be a part of that. Uh, the The school list of everything that has been needed, you most are certainly welcome to be a part of that, and, and we are gathering now for our schools, and we would just love to do that. We've tried to do this all summer instead of waiting to the last minute, and so if you catch things that are out and about that's on sale this week, grab a few things. Maybe next week, grab a few more things that's different. So this way we're not all in a hurry right at the last minute. But help us as we are helping the children here in St. Francis County. We'd appreciate that. Greg says he is looking for a PM service to be a part of on July the 25th. Well, Greg, we will hope and pray that God opens up that door for you, that he will grant you a place to lead worship and to minister on the 25th. Folks, that is really about all I have got. It is a calm Friday here in the Delta. Like I said, we have got, matter of fact, let me look at that radar once again. Uh, we have got some serious storms that are that are in the state. They're in the northwest corner. Uh, it looks like they are tracking northeast, but they are connecting to some storms back in uh, back in Oklahoma. So it looks like we're probably going to gonna get a slap of that storm tail later on today. Uh, but uh, just, hey, just understand it's going to be later today, so you got to uh, look like a good clear morning, probably till about 2 or 3 o'clock, that if you got to get out and run some errands, go to the grocery store, you can do all that and get a big old extra bag of chips today, 
and uh, just enjoy your Friday until the rains hit later on tonight. So that is what's taking place today. Today and tomorrow, it is deep study days for your pastor. That is what I will be doing, and that is wrapping up our Sunday morning message as we uh, are now deep diving into the book of James. I mean, good stuff in the book of James. So uh, pray for me as I uh, prepare and spend time before God and get ready to see what God has for us. Oh, you are most welcome, Greg. Thank you for that. It is uh, it is our pleasure to be here each morning. I don't know about y'all, but I look forward to the chat every morning. I look forward to get back and hanging out and just visiting and seeing what's going on. And I enjoy the chit chat every morning, but y'all, y'all, we got some great Bible study going on uh, right here every morning. So today and tomorrow, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing, and that is deep study day. Right now, our ladies are cleaning the church, and so uh, we ask you to pray for Denise and for Miss Gloria as they are up there getting our church campus ready for Sunday morning services. And on Sunday morning, if you are in driving distance, we would love to have you to hang out with us. The coffee bar opens at 8.30 while the praise band is rehearsing. And then our Sunday school class will start uh, at 9.30 at a Sunday school for all ages. And then at 10.30, the worship kicks in. And we would just love to have you as a part of that. And if you can, if you are providentially hindered or you are out of town, you're out of state, or maybe you are part of another church and you just want to hang out with us after your church is over, we would just certainly encourage that as well. You can catch us uh, right here as we will be on Facebook Live or you can catch the replay, either one. We would just love to have you as a part of our Ridgewood family on campus or online. And all of God's children said, amen, amen, and amen. All right, folks, y'all ready? Let's wrap up chapter three in 2 Samuel. So go ahead and turn on over there. Uh, today, it, it's it's almost uneventful, and I don't want to say that uh, lackadaisically, but uh, there's been a lot going on. I mean, a lot going on in this chapter. Um uh, I mean, we've seen capital murder. Um, we've seen, yesterday was a horrific curse that was, that was placed on, uh, uh, that was placed on Joab and Joab's family. Uh, I mean, it was just, just harsh. You know, we know, we know that, uh, uh, you know, Abner had, had, I mean, he had left the country. He had, he he was leading the people of the northern kingdom or, or or of Israel to to be under the leadership of King David, and so it was the the first steps of reuniting uh, all of Israel. Instead of being a north and a south kingdom, it would be as one. It was all be as unity, and so lots and lots of things that have been taking place. But what we have now is uh, uh, you know when we left yesterday. Uh, Abner has been killed, and we know Joab is the one who has done it. We know his brother was there, so this was all instigated. It was premeditated, and and so this is harsh. But we saw, if you remember, is when David dealt with Joab, he didn't punish him personally. He didn't uh, put him in prison, and he didn't execute him at all. But he did issue that really substantial curse on the family. If you want to know more about that, you can catch yesterday's broadcast, or you can just go back and uh, read the 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 back, you know, half a dozen verses or so, and you'll see what that curse was. Today, the morning begins. The morning of Abner, and uh, uh, again, we're going to see the heart of David. Hey, this is uh, I, I, I don't know if you've really realized this. But every now and then, in like little bite-sized nuggets, we're seeing the character. We're seeing the, the integrity, the real heart of, of who King David is. And so I hope that, that you are making note of that. I hope that you are being able to say, ah, ah, okay, this is, this is the real David. This is who we're talking about. And, you know, so many times, you know, David gets gets that bad rap. You know, he had the six wives. Now he's got the seventh one. Michael's back. And and so he's got that. He's got all those children. And we know that those six boys that we talked about just a few days ago are going to give him pure grief. 
See, we understand that. And we have a habit of wanting to get into that and to to really focus on, you know, he's just a, just a screw up, you know, really, if you just know the truth as a king. And then, then if we're not thinking about that, we picture David as that little boy as he was fighting Goliath that we studied back in 1 Samuel. I need us to understand something. David's one of the greatest kings of all of Israel, okay? And so this was a very great man. And, and I want us to make sure that we focus, that we highlight on this, the, the character that we see out of David, the integrity. What was David Hart, David's heart? If you remember, we knew that, that this was a man, okay, that, that God saw even as a little boy. God saw his heart. God knew exactly who David was, and that was the man that God wanted to be king. And so here he is now. It is, you know, several, several years later, he is the king of the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom, I'm sorry, of the southern kingdom, and he's about to be king over all of it. But but don't don't just don't have have tunnel vision to where all you're seeing about David is the David and Goliath story. Don't 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 focus just on that. And don't focus just on the fact that he he did fall into what we can call polygamy and he had multiple wives, multiple mistresses, or the word is concubines, um, and, and just multiple children from all of those women. Don't don't focus on on just those things. You've got to look at the totality of the man. Uh, and so I just, uh, I, I want us to understand that there is kingly qualities that God saw, and that is why he is the king. And uh, and if we miss those things, we're really missing that character study into who King David really is. And today is another one of those glimpses. So go ahead and turn on over there. We're going to pick up at verse 31, and we're going to wrap up the chapter and and like I said, there's really not a lot that's going on except for seeing really who who th this David is another uh, facet, if you will, of the king. All right, so we pick up at verse 31. This is after, okay, this is after he has just pronounced this curse on Joab's family. Okay. Verse 31, then David said to Joab and to all the people who were with him. Now you have to understand that the people that were with him probably constitutes that band of soldiers that were with him. Y'all remember that? Because Joab and his brother had just come back from battle uh, and they found out that Abner had been there and that's what uh, constituted that murder. And so it is probable that when, when we read this, that David said to Joab and all the people who were with him, that it was his men, okay? Now, we don't know that. We can't, uh, you know, we can't, you know, hang our hat on that. And it could be a lot more of just the general uh, people of Judah, okay? It could be either of those things. And it's really irrelevant, but I just want us to, to make sure that we're, we're as clear as we possibly can be. Then David said to Joab and to all the people who were with him, Tear your clothes, gird yourselves with sackcloth, and mourn for Abner. And King David followed the coffin. What a statement here, okay? He is telling Joab, and that includes his little brother, and all the people that were there, this is a wrong thing. This is not what God would have, have, have you know, ordained. It is time to mourn. And so David leads his people to mourn. Now this, again, is a, uh, you, you know, this is, is part of that leadership that we're seeing. David leads his people to mourn for the man who was, he was defecting the northern kingdom and he was coming in. David's heart's broken. And then we see the king himself following the coffin. This is the funeral procession as they are going. Y'all, imagine this. As they are moving down the streets of Hebron, and who knows how many people are following along. Obviously, all the people that Abner had brought with him now all the people that are coming in under King David, and I would dare say 
that Joab and his little brother and all of his band of merry men who fought with him are included in this funeral march. But it says that David followed the coffin. David was right behind the coffin. That is a phenomenal statement. So they buried Abner in Hebron. And, and I think that's pretty interesting because Abner had acknowledged that he was no longer part of the northern kingdom. He was coming to the south to be under the leadership of King David. And so he is now buried in what we can call his new homeland. His new homeland. So they buried Abner in Hebron and the king lifted up his voice and he wept at the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. In other words, this is a heartbreaking day. Okay? Heartbreaking day. David, when you really look back at David and his uh, ascent to the throne, okay, David did not want his kingdom uh, to be established by pure violence, by taking over, okay? If you remember, he didn't go after Saul. He could have done that. David was the anointed king, but he never once did that. And, and multiple times we saw him turn away from harming or even killing Saul. He didn't want violence to be the signature of his kingdom. And y'all, that's huge. He did not want that. He wanted God to establish his kingdom because he knew that God would direct it. And if God is directing it, then God will provide for him. He'll protect him and that God would punish his enemies. So a stamp of violence is just horrific on David's uh, ideology of the, of the throne here. He believed, so scripture says that vengeance belongs to God. So this is the true David here. He is broken because this was a senseless murder. I mean, it was absolutely senseless. And the king sang a lament over Abner. So this is a song that David sings there at the funeral as they are about to bury him there in Hebron. This is the song. Should Abner die as a fool dies, your hands were not bound nor your feet put in fetters. As a man falls before wicked men, so you fell. Now, if we only knew the tune of that song, right? And all the people around heard it. Then all the people wept over him again. And when all the people came to persuade David to eat, in other words, David is so broken, he's in such grief that he doesn't even eat. When all the people came to persuade David to eat food while it was still day, David took an oath saying, God do so to me and more also if I taste bread or anything else until the sun goes down. In other words, this is part of my mourning. I am not going to eat. It's literally, it is a period of fasting during this mourning period. And he wasn't going to have anything to do with it. And again, that is the leadership of David that is setting the example of his people. Verse 36. Now all the people took note of it. You see, this was the... The, the, the signature, if you will, that truly said David didn't have anything to do with this. David didn't want this done. This mourning, this lamenting, and now this fasting period in that time of mourning, this now tells the people of Judah, that then the southern kingdom, and it also tells the men of Abner who were there, the king is innocent. The king did not want anything to do with it. Look here, for all the people and all Israel, okay? Word spread, all Israel means the northern kingdom. For all the people and all Israel understood that day 
that it had not been the king's intent to kill Abner, the son of Ner. It was clear as day. All the people knew. Then the king said to his servants, Do you not know that a prince and a great man has fallen this day in Israel? Do you not know that? And I am weak today, though anointed king, and these men, the sons of Zeruiah, are too harsh for me. The Lord shall repay the evildoer according to his wickedness. Oh, so we've got a change taking place. David is, is broken. He is, he's exhibiting that in every manner that he is, is, is showing the people. But now then, look at that last line. Well, first let me back up. In verse 38, do you not know that a prince and a great man has fallen this day in Israel? This is setting the, the eulogy, if you will, for Abner. That statement is how David wanted all of Judah and all of Israel to remember Abner. A great man has fallen in Israel. Okay, That's a pretty good eulogy to be remembered by. A great man. And I am weak today, though anointed king, and these men, the sons of Zeruiah, are too harsh for me. Look here. The Lord shall repay the evildoer according to his wickedness. Who is the evildoer? It is his man, Joab. That statement tells us exactly why David himself did not punish Joab for the murder of Abner. David issued that curse over the family of Joab, but he didn't do anything. Remember, he didn't punish him. He didn't throw him in prison. He didn't execute him. Why? The Lord shall repay the evildoer according to his wickedness. And again, it comes back to where David did not want his throne built on violence. He wanted it established by what God directed and how God ordained it. And he knew that God would take care of the one who senselessly killed Abner. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Man, what good stuff. How better to end this week, this Friday, to know that God is going to avenge what went on, which means that you and I can hold on to that God will watch over and protect us. And to that I say amen and amen. Guys, if you get out today, please be careful. Again, enjoy the sunshine while you're out. It does distinctly look like the uh, the storms are coming our way. But that'll be later on this afternoon, maybe into the evening, even if it does get here today. Uh, remember, remember, school supplies, if you are out shopping, uh, let's see here. Uh, and you can bring those to the campus on, on Sunday. That is not a problem. Uh, what else am I wanting to tell you guys? Oh, uh, hey, invite others to go ahead and like this page. We want to make sure that we're growing our audience and invite others to to uh, join us every every morning, Lord willing, Monday through Friday, right here at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And, and again, if you are, uh, Brandy and uh, uh, the folks in Maine, if you guys are still with us, thank you again for hanging out with us. We appreciate you so very much. And spread the word on the East Coast. We would love to have you join us. In the meantime, I'm going to click that button and I'm going to turn this up and that means that it is time for me to go fill up my coffee cup because it's empty. I'm out here, guys. If you get out, be careful. Tell somebody about Jesus. I love y'all so much. I'll see you guys on Sunday. Bye-bye.